you haven't already watched part one, go check it out. If you're here for part two, welcome back. As you saw in the other video, getting to Thailand was a little bit chaotic, but we officially made it. We took the shuttle from the airport to our hotel Ibis, Ibis, we still don't know because everybody kept calling it something different. These hotel rooms were super tiny, but it was nice and on the beach. As soon as we got checked in, we went and headed to find food. Around this time of day, it's very hard to find anything open, but we found this super cute spot that we went to multiple times. I got pad thai and Matt got this other pork rice vegetable dish that was really, really good. Is it good? Oh yeah. First meal in Thailand. After we ate, we went to check out the beach, which was basically non-existent because it is monsoon season and I was a little bit disappointed, but don't worry, it gets better later. So we ended up walking to the course the first day. It was a little over a mile away, which wasn't too bad. We obviously couldn't do that every day. That's way too exhausting, but it was nice because we got to see a little bit of scenery. There's a really cool temple on the way that's absolutely beautiful. These are the iconic Samui Swine Classic belts. Every year, the winner of MPO and FPO get their name put on it. And this is actually the last year that they can fit another name on here. So I'm not sure what's gonna happen next year, if they're gonna add some smaller ones on the side to put more names or go with all brand new belts. I'm not sure, but I can't wait to see. Also Mint was kind enough to donate some discs to me so I could donate them to the course because it's really, really hard to get discs in Thailand. Every year they have custom jerseys you can get and I made the mistake of not getting it the first time I came so I finally got one this year. They actually had two different options and of course now I wish I got both but I definitely love this one. Woo! Good foot. A giant termite my arms. So the land you see here used to be part of the course. There was an extra three or four holes over there. Unfortunately, after COVID, the cost to rent it just didn't make sense anymore. And now it just plays host to some water buffalo. And I love that you never know what you're gonna see out on the course, it's wild. After we got our practice round in, I guess we just headed back to the hotel and went to sleep because we were so exhausted because I have no pictures or no videos for anything else until the next day. So we must have crashed. Samui is the type of place where you're more likely to find something to eat at 3 a.m. than you are at 9 a.m. So we did have some struggles finding breakfast, but I don't really care for breakfast anyway, so this was perfect for me. I absolutely love chicken skewers that have been made on the grill, so this was just perfect for me. There was also this little coffee hut open that made really good iced coffees, and the ice they used was very similar to Sonic Ice, and if you know, you know, best ice ever. So this was also a spot that I love to stop at. So we ended up with four skewers, two chicken, two of this mystery meat, chicharrones, these really, really good sesame balls that I don't know what were in them, but it was sweet. The beef looking one that was not beef, I think it was some kind of organs, I took a few bites of, but it was a really weird texture, so I didn't really mess with that one after that, but the chicken one was very good. After breakfast, we headed down to the beach to check it out in the much calmer conditions. We were actually able to walk down on the sand and it was beautiful and we could not wait to get back here later. But for now, it was time to head to the course so I could play my first round of the Samui Swine Classic. I was still a little hungry from breakfast so I ended up getting some fried rice from the kitchen. Nigel's family does an awesome job 
playing host, they have a restaurant, they have basically a walk-up bar, anything you could possibly need out there. We had our players meeting. On the left, you see Nigel, the course owner, and then on the right is Luke. He's the TD. They do a phenomenal job running this event. It's a lot of fun. It is a unique event. It's not like anything else in the world I've ever played, but it is such a cool experience. Like I said, you never know what you're gonna see on the course. And on the first hole, we had a chicken eating something. So if you've never seen any coverage about the Samui Swine, it is an 11 hole course that you actually play through twice during your round, which to me is a really cool concept because it gives you a whole other opportunity to fix your mistakes or make new ones. Like here, where I had the worst grip lock I've ever had. I can't believe I had one of my most embarrassing shots ever on film, but here we are. It was a little hard to snap back after taking a five on such a relatively simple hole, but it is what it is and it was time to move yeah, on and just keep going. And this was the demon goose that tormented everyone on this hole. It was actually kind of entertaining. I ended up finishing in first place. I believe I had five strokes on second place at this point, and I was pretty satisfied overall with my round. Afterwards, we headed back to the restaurant that we ate on day one and tried some more really good food. It was just such a cool place and we really enjoyed giving them our business. The next day we tried this other spot that had smoothies, of course, fresh fruit smoothies are like a staple in Thailand. It also said they had breakfast, but they didn't really have breakfast. So we ended up just getting smoothies and then going back to the hotel. I had a super delicious fresh strawberry smoothie and Matt had a watermelon one. I'm not usually a fan of watermelon, but that was good. Also, how sweet is this dog's face? These two dogs were outside of the little coffee shop every day and they were so cute. So like I said, I'm not really a fan of breakfast, but I actually enjoyed this at the hotel because it had the most random things ever. Spaghetti, fried rice, salad. I had a salad with the best Thousand Island dressing I've ever had. This butter was absolutely phenomenal. The croissants were great. Even the toast with the jam, it was just really good. I also ended up going and getting an omelet from the omelet station, even though I'm not a huge fan of eggs, but I saw Matt's and had to have one of my own. This ended up being our ride to the course every single day. He just would say Frisbee golf every time we walked out and he was so thrilled to have our regular business for like six days straight. <laughs> the amateur side is the three days prior to the pro side. So Matt took every opportunity he could get between our rounds, after our rounds, before our rounds to get extra practice in. Round two, it is super, super hot today. I'm first. Well, like five strokes maybe but anything can happen so 
Gotta keep pushing. What was cool about having Matt there was I actually got to have videos of my rounds versus normally when I go play anywhere, I am by myself and there's no footage of myself. And even though I don't love watching myself throw and I don't love my form, I know it'll be cool to look back on years from now and just see how far I've come. This round had some really good moments and it also had a lot of really bad ones. This was a good one. This was a bad one. I ended up going OB here. I ended up going OB a few more times on different holes. And at this point in the round, things were just going really bad. Missed Mando, had to go from the drop zone to save my four or five, I don't remember. It just seemed like one bad thing after another. I could not catch a break and I was feeling pretty defeated and just kind of ready to be done. I had this really nasty cut roll OB after going OB on the last hole. I did my normal patent pending, which is usually spot on and hit this tree. After my round, I just needed a snack and to decompress, especially after I saw those super harsh ratings. The pressure, just recording you. Matt got some more practice in before we headed back to the hotel to clean up and head to the night market. I'm not a big drinker, but I definitely needed a drink after this round, so I got this really delicious strawberry mojito and it was less than three dollars and then first thing i found was this pork belly i am a huge huge fan of pork belly and this was phenomenal it was a little pricier by thailand standards but 10 10 recommend everything you buy at the market is cooked right there in front of you and it's so cool to see and this pork belly i could eat all day every day How do you feel about eating a scorpion? Uh, it's gonna be fun. Ooh. Better you than me. And make sure to come back for part three of the Thailand series to watch Matthew eat one of these scorpions.